is whether Apollo chooses to try joust or not. If it tries to choose to doubt joust, it's going to be exactly what you said. The dice are going to fly. Somebody's going to be happy. Somebody's going to going to walk away with their tail between their legs. If Apollo doesn't choose to joust, it's going to turn a little bit more into that positional game. And it's still probably going to start to favor Tom just a little bit with the uh, higher initiative Garvin and Hera. But those T70s, even if you don't have double repositions, they're an amazingly good chassis. That points cost. So Apollo, I'm sure he knows what he's doing with it, even if he doesn't choose to joust, could still be a bit of a challenge for Tom. I agree, Solar Swarm Monkey. I think it is time for a drink. For me, a coffee, because it's 10 o'clock and it's been a very long day of work. Um, I know Tom has had a very long day of work uh, and I'm sure Apollo's probably had a nice little rest. I think it's probably around 2, 3 p.m. at the moment in Spain. So he's probably totally happy. He's probably in a great headspace. So I think maybe time-wise, um, and also Tom just had to watch and commentate one of his teammates cop a, a bit of a beating there from uh, that last round. So hopefully Tom's got, him, got himself in a good headspace and it remembers that every game is played in a vacuum and it doesn't matter what happened in the last four games. It's about what happens in this game for him today. Um, do you want to run us through, Suresh, uh, what Tom's squad is? I think everyone's seen it or something incredibly similar before. Um, what, 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 do we got, what do we got here from Tom? Am I allowed to just say new Rebel Beef over to you, Cam? Because this is basically <laughs> what this squad is. <laughs> okay, so really we're looking at masses and masses of token passing, all the, all the good tricks that somebody... Somebody is put stuck together in a 200 point list, kicking off as you see there with Benthic two tubes just getting down on the table with Perceptive co pilot to double down on Benthic's pilot ability and also Leia Organa for those uh, white stops and K turns. Then we have Kyle Katan just so he can pass more tokens around with Jin so to make those tokens, of course, evade tokens. Multi Crow. Continuing on the theme of tokens uh, and also the big three die primary. Garvin Drace, everybody's new favorite pain in the butt. Am I allowed to say that? I hope so. I just said it. We're in focus tokens to, we to, give, to give other people focus tokens, which of course can become evade tokens. And the flavor of the month. Hera Syndulla in the A Wing, rocking the thread traces. So not only are you getting token passing you're also looking to nail those locks on a ship to blow that away with the rest of your list so pretty standard stuff here that i'm sure has been all over xtc for the last two weeks now and probably the last two months on on your casual and, and tournament tables as well over to you cam for the resistance so our resistance squad today um is a play uh, again uh i could probably just say resistance beef over to you suresh but i think uh I think the, at the moment, the, the guys are just sorting out probably whether or not they'll be using tokens or the card. You can just see some pinging and some hands flying about. Um, but on the resistance side, we have the ever-lovely Rose Tico. Um, her, she is the pilot who can, while you defend, perform an attack. Uh, sorry, while you defend or perform an attack, you re-roll up to one of your results for each other friendly ship in the attack arc. So she'll probably be sitting towards the back of the pack so that she can get those free rerolls. And she's got the C3PO calculate, uh, sorry, calculate coordinate, which is really just such a brilliant little piece. Um, it brings her cost up by five points, but I think it really gives some versatility to those other X-Wings, allows them to double mod. And I think probably suspect a double mod for um, the tracers. And we'll get to those in just a second. Uh, we've got three uh, Rexperts, as we like to call them, Red Squadron Experts. Simple ships, um, not much to them. They're I3, they've got their heroics and they've got their S-foils. Um, and then there's three of those fellas uh, who I will color in a second. Uh, and then we have Zari Bangal, who is another fun uh, A-wing. We didn't get enough A-wings last, last game. You do not skip your perform action step after you partially execute a maneuver. And she's rocking those thread traces, just trying to get some double mods across these X-wings in that first volley. Uh, and... 
that's going to be a very devastating, devastating hit. It really does, though, depend on whether or not. Uh, sorry, it does really depend where uh, Apollo puts those puts those target locks. That's going to be a big. That that's mainly his decision in that first engagement is who are you going to take down first? I think I know who I would take down first. Suresh, who are you betting? Apollo will take down first in that first engagement. Who's he target locking? I'm definitely going to say Kyle. So Benthic is a really attractive option if you think you can get an initiative kill. But that's the massive question is, is you've got to be sure of yourself because if you put four damage into Benthic and that's all you did, uh, you're going to be a very, very unhappy resistance player. Now, this is a really, really interesting setup. You've just got one of these Rexperts, the yellow one there, just hung out in the middle. And it looks like uh, Apollo's setting up the rest of his list opposite to opposite corner here to, to Tom. So not what I expected. You really did expect these Rexperts to just clump themselves up, point the list at something, try and blow it away. But... That's not what we're seeing at the moment. So, frankly, Cam, I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. Um, we've got one little X-Wing just hanging out on his own there. Um, if I'm looking at this, I probably would have said that Apollo just runs for the joust and just tries to make that work. But I'm not the one on the Spanish XTC team. And he is... This is a very different um, setup than I would have expected. I would have expected maybe a jousting block. Uh, what do you think he's maybe trying to achieve here, Suresh? Just spread the arcs, try and keep an, an unexpected... Sorry, a um, keep a sort of different engagement just so that he can't be predicted? What I actually think, and we'll probably see it in the first two rounds is maybe one of two things. Number one is that you'll set up like this, but you'll actually have some mechanism to bring your squad together. Or two, using yellow or red here as maybe some kind of bait and try and draw Tom out of position. One of the ways to actually deal with these rebel token passing squads, if you can survive the first few rounds of combat, they start to run low on tokens. And then it becomes a fair fight against just some fairly average chassis. And if and, and most players are going to back themselves to actually win that, or at least they should. So that's that's the two options that I think, and they're just about ready to go. They're just setting the first few maneuvers. So it's, the first couple of rounds here will might give us an indication of of, of what Apollo's got here. Yeah, it will be um, very interesting to see what Apollo has planned here. I'm sure he's not just placing these because uh, he's doing so on a whim. There's clearly a plan here of some kind, and I'm very interested to see what it is. And I think, for me, uh, we watched yesterday's game uh, with, uh, I believe it was Andy versus Michael, um, and Andy flew that, that squad brilliantly, a very strange scum squad. Uh, and he just flew it with some real mastery. And watching the game last turn as well, um, the game uh, was also, again, beautifully flown by the Spanish side. So I can only imagine that, that Apollo is going to maintain that really beautiful flying that the Spanish team has shown us so far. And I'm sure he's got a really good plan. Uh, I think uh, the guys look pretty ready. Um, we're just I'm just keeping an eye out for that, that timer to start so that I can start our, our overlay timer. All right, lots of ticking, lots of lots of okaying. Lots of pinging. And we're live. Time started. Definitely have to agree with you on that, Cam, while the players run through their first couple of rounds here, suspecting just a pretty cagey opening there from Tom. Yeah, that's just the one forward. Really, really, really happy and, and just blown away by the way the uh to just to get to watch these Spanish guys fly. Um it's been Really interesting. They've brought some really cool lists that you probably wouldn't expect. They've flown them really, really well, um, intricately. Pulled out some moves that you'd never have thought of, but these guys clearly know what they're doing. I'm so happy to have been able to watch them. And of course, if you miss them, 
don't forget we should be able to get them on the space, Sydney City Space Slugs YouTube channel uh, before too long. Correct. They will be up. All three of the games that we've streamed over the last today, sorry, today and yesterday, they will be up within hours uh, of this stream finishing. So if you really want to go back and critique either side, feel free, go drop some comments, let us know what you thought, uh, and just enjoy the games, because really that is our favourite thing here at Sydney City Space Slugs, is we just love X-Wing, and we love watching X-Wing and talking X-Wing, and playing it every now and then when we can. Uh, yeah, fun walk, no pressure, Tom. Um, sadly, he can't see you say that, and I think he's feeling some pressure. <laughs> the Australian team cannot afford a lose. Uh, they, they they need to win the next three games that they have, um, else be, I think, just knocked out of, really out of contention for XTC. So there's a bit of pressure on Tom's back, but he's a very tall man. If you haven't met him, I think he's 6'4", six, 6'3". Six, uh, tall fella, um, and he can carry a lot of weight on his big, broad, tall, manly shoulders. He's um, also the most handsome man in X-Wing. Yeah, where did that That's come from? I don't. I'm not saying that it's it, it's in contention, but where did that start? Well, it's just obvious, isn't it? I hope he doesn't listen back to this because I don't see it myself. No, Look, he's Tom a is definitely the most handsome man in X-wing. I'm wearing a bag on my head right now while we get these these this game underway. You see those two uh, experts in the middle there just turn towards the the group of of three. Looks like he is trying to clump up. He was going Maybe. to the bait. You were right. A bait there. But looks like Tom, uh, the little fishy, so the big fish, he didn't bite. Uh, that, that you could have seen a maybe a, a fast manoeuvre, get past all these gas clouds and just try and catch one of these uh, Rexperts if he thought maybe they would turn in. But Tom is a patient player and he's looks like he's taking his time. Just see exactly. I think he's probably thinking what we're thinking. What is Apollo planning? And just waiting to see if he can try and gauge that. So what I'm thinking now, Cam, is if you're one of these two players, who who do you think is happier with an engagement in these gas clouds? Because that's what I think we're heading towards. I think most likely, I think Apollo probably favours inside of these gas clouds only because Tom has uh, Tom has the burden of needing to try and, needing to try to keep his ships near each other. Um, Apollo doesn't have that doesn't have that disadvantage. He can spread his guys out. They can be range three of each other. As long as they've got arcs pointed towards the same ships, he's happy. Whereas Tom really needs to try and keep that range two to get the full efficiency. So he has a bit of a tighter formation he needs to keep. Now, the gas cloud defense, defensively, is perfect for Tom. He's really happy to see that because he gets focus tokens to go give to everyone. It's just a, it's a confetti uh, of focus tokens. So he's happy to defend um, but he just doesn't have the freedom to move around as much, I don't think. Yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to agree, although with the with the additional tokens, you might just see Tom able to push a little bit more damage through if you engage in that in that sort of area. That's what I'm that's what I'm curious about. But we'll we'll see how this goes. I don't know that Tom is gonna want to turn in his Going to want to hold that decision as soon as he can, or as, rather as long as he can. Maybe even get past the clouds and then come in around them towards uh, towards the uh, middle of the board. And that'll actually mean that he doesn't have to try and fit himself through that narrow lane there. Because it is a very narrow lane. Um, I think I think Apollo has probably made the decision as well that he favours... Uh, an engagement through the through the obstacles, and probably why he set up opposite and tried to bait Tom to fly through them. But Tom will take his time. Um, he has the ability to tank more so than Apollo does. I think Apollo will bleed points a little bit faster than Tom will, just because he has that token in the Gino. So he will be able to keep half points on his ships. Uh, uh, keep from giving half points on his ships a little bit longer. So Tom is probably happy to delay an engagement for a while um, and just wait it out and see if he can get an optimal engagement. But I don't know, he, he, he may need to just make a decision and, and Apollo will probably try and force that somehow. 
here we see the the fast four straights from from Tom's list. Trying to get himself around the corner here, and I think that'll give him the options. If Apollo wants to turn left and and come in, no, he's not. He's going three straight with that green Rex, but and so he's really really trying to keep these gas clouds in play. And a big five straight from Zari. So, yeah, keeping himself clumped up, just circling around these gas clouds here. I'm starting to get the feeling that if he thinks if he has to turn in first, this is Apollo, if he thinks he has to turn in first, he's going to lose. Whereas if, if he gets Tom to turn first, he'll actually get to choose his, choose his engagement. And that's probably a lesson learnt from the last game for those those guys who watched it uh, with Nobby against Ungaro. Is that Nobby never got to choose his engagement? So I think that's what's going on here. Yeah, um, it definitely seems like neither player wants to do the, be the first one to to start dancing. Um, and that is always a tough decision in X-Wing, I think, is to decide when to commit. Um, but like you said, that last game, uh, I think Nobby was... He may have just taken a little too long to make that decision. Um, and uh, Ungaru made that decision at the perfect time, sprung a trap, and really took took some nice easy shots into Nobby and really put Nobby behind from the early game. Um, this time it looks like both players have decided to take the Nobby route and just slow it down. Don't commit too hard, and really looks like neither of them want to commit to a lane through the through the gas clouds, especially. Um, they seem a bit gas cloud phobic at the moment. That said, you've got Tom going as fast as he can past them, and I think this if he gets into that open space at the uh, bottom of your screen there, he's actually going to enjoy that a little bit more if if the engagement will happen there. So yeah. a couple of rounds still, though, to turn around. But what, he's, what he might be aiming to do is if he's... If if Apollo hangs out these these two experts just behind a little bit too much, they're going to get caught out. The other, the other danger here for Apollo as well is Rose. Now, Rose is quite a bit slower than the rest of that re uh, resistance list. Four straight is red and she doesn't have the best greens in the world, so she can actually get caught out if she doesn't uh, manoeuvre herself either with the with a more attractive target or behind the clouds, uh, and that's where you can start to pull apart the list if you're the Rebel player. Definitely. Um, Rose is such an easy target. Rose, the, these, little, these little pods, they, they've only got two agility, they've got four health, they can pop very quickly, especially if she gets caught out on her own. If you don't get any other um, of your friendlies in the attack arc, you don't get any of your free rerolls, and calculators can't save you if you're rolling blanks. So I think um, Tom is is probably not going for Rose, but if you if you give him some Rose, uh, just a little bit of her, he he'll, he'll munch her up. Um, he's got the ability to take target locks with his ships instead of focuses and fully mod the important shots and defend against the important shots that the, the opponent's taking. That's the real power of this Heritani list, as it's becoming known, um, is just the freedom to uh, dangle a ship out, let them take a really good quality shot, especially if that, if that ship is named Garvin, because they can just tank shots all day. They're like a super Luke at that point. Um, unlimited uh, focus tokens and uh, an evade token where it's needed with the Jin Erso from, um, from Kyle. Did you just say Heritani? Because I had a flashback. It is. That, that's the, what it's becoming known as. It's colloquially known as Heritani, <laughs> which is pretty apt, to be honest. It's it's pretty creative. Oh, look, I'll, I'll take it. But I seriously just had a flashback. It's okay. We have bullseyes printed on the um, on the arcs now, so you know it's 2.0. Okay. It is still 2.0. Like, yeah, there's a big bank there from Benthic. And I do like the positioning still, because Benthic now has the option here for either a straight, or actually not a straight, that'd be a bank next round, or or even a turn. What I suspect is going to happen is you're going to see Zari and that green Rexpert turn themselves in into into this channel, 
and that gives Apollo two axes if he wants it or two axes if he wants it, you know, through the channel there and also uh, on the right-hand side of the board. Oh, no, he's actually pushed uh, the, the green one forwards. He's going all the way around. I, I, I have to say I'm not quite sure anymore. The toilet bowl manoeuvre here, um, or as we would call it here in Australia, the dunny bowl. Um, the just circle in the board, just a bit of a circle in the board. I think a diagonal engagement probably suits Tom a little bit more here, a diagonal engagement through the clouds, um, giving him a bit of a wider lane to get big, thick, bend thick through, um, and, and a couple more options. Um, pinging, who's he pinging there? He's pinging Zari. So Zari bumped, but of course still gets actions Correct. due to pilot ability. So taking a roll there, going, wait for it, round the outside. And uh, three bank here. So yeah, he's really looking to, to try and bait Tom into turning into these clouds first. That's the best I've actually got for, for what Apollo is doing right now. Not to say that it's ineffective. I, I really just thought that he just has to he just has to get in there and start dealing some damage. And a bump by Rose, you just don't want to leave her behind. I think... Um... My, if, if I'm if I'm Apollo and I'm doing this plan here, and I'm sure his teammates might be able to chime in and tell us maybe what he might be planning here, um, I think he's trying to delay engagement as long as possible to hopefully force a mistake from Tom. Because, like I said, the, the burden is on Tom to keep his squad together. Because the real power of that of of this formation, so of this squad, happens in that range two formation, and and Tom needs to keep that, needs to get first engagement with that range two formation. I think Apollo is probably trying to delay here to hopefully force a mistake from Tom, um, and Tom is is pushing Garvin out there very far. I think maybe trying to hopefully catch um, a nice cheeky little range three shot there, but again, Garvin's looking a little out of position. He's a little bit forward here. Um, he's he's doesn't mean that. Um, Benthic and, and Kyle can't catch up, but it is sort of playing into Apollo's hand here of breaking up that range two, that range two bubble. Yes, I, I I certainly agree that that this is actually possibly the well. I said I certainly agree that it's possibly the strategy. That's that sounds like rubbish. <laughs> um, I, I I agree that he's he's really just trying to. Again, just not not get that engagement on on Tom's terms, which is, you know, one block against the other block with with a thousand tokens, all the confetti, uh, different colours as well, with all the locks that'll be flying around. Just what he's got to watch out for is how can he actually generate a meaningful engagement. And this is Apollo. So what's happened here is that if he if he's not careful. He's going to get, say, Rose hung out to dry, or or this trailing Red Squadron expert, and and he's going to if he can't actually get the rest of his ships to bear, which are by the way facing you know the wrong direction right now, he's actually going to get picked apart bit by bit. That is a very good point. All three um, of the of the Red Squadron experts are facing at a different angle, which when your the power of your squad comes from. Um, dice it comes from arc sorry it comes from the the shots of those x-wings that's the real power of this squad is just those three guns um it, it is a little hard when the three arcs are facing in three different directions a little bit of extra work required there from apollo to bring them back to bear against tom's squad here and you'll and notice says, the opposite of that is uh, tom's tom has three of his his three dice guns um, are all facing the same direction yeah. Now, uh, in the chat, Nil says 70 minutes of fleeing, then dropping in for half points. Well, you've got us all night, Nil, so I hope you enjoy the game. Yeah, we're enough. We are more than entertaining enough, I like to think. Um, uh, yeah, we're more than entertaining. Uh, forget X-Wing, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll turn the game off and we can all just chat for for an hour or so. Um, we are... Oof, we are 16... Am I doing that maths right? Yes, we are 16 minutes into the game. Um a little bit far away from an engagement. Garvin could three hard and, and maybe catch an X-Wing through a cloud maybe this turn, but that would definitely leave him far out of position. Um, 
what do you think Tom's plan is here now? How does he try and generate uh, a good engagement for himself, Suresh? Uh, in this round, he probably can't. But I think he can actually chase and be in a position to start shooting next round. I think maybe a so, bank here from Garvin, just a slow, like, little one bank set up for a two hard round that corner there. Maybe two hard Benthic. Bring Kyle around. Uh, yep. That may be playing into uh, Apollo's hands is because that we've literally just described that thing that Tom doesn't want to do, which is start to break up his, his range two formation. Yeah. But that's one option. Or the other option is to just keep going around the outside and, and, and you're playing this game of chicken almost. And I, I don't know whether that means anything to our Spanish viewers out there, uh, but it's the, that standoff is who, who blinks first, who reaches for their gun first, and they're the ones who are going to lose. So that's that's two options there for Tom, uh, because I hate to say it because I'm really not that kind of guy. I like the idea of chasing for a little bit longer because I reckon you can start to catch out, Rose. Yeah, Rose is, is quite slow as, as well, especially compared to the A-Wing, but also compared to these X-Wings. Um, I'll get her dial up quickly just so that everyone can see it. Um, it's not fast. A lot of red. One hard's a red. Three banks are red. Four straight is red. Um, she can't really keep up uh, for the fast boosts that these X-Wings can do. And if if you're right, if Apollo's not careful, uh, there really could be a, a sneaky little shot come in from, from Tom's side and put some pain in. And, and she really doesn't want to take any shots. I think Tom's just taken around here, maybe just to block up his formation again. I wouldn't be surprised if Garvin didn't go super crazy fast. We'll see how we we'll see how we go. And there you see the big bank from uh, Red Squadron Expert. I thought that Turner, he's coming in actually with a boost. So it looks like he's choosing a lane. Um, I was going to say finally, uh, but I actually don't half mind this from... Apollo, that that Red Squadron expert is threatening both of those channels down the middle of the board, whether he goes straight or banks or, or even turns, hard turns to the left and then can boost back down the lane. So I I don't mind this. And there you see a big boost from that, that other Red Squadron expert, the red one, red Red Squadron expert. We'll try saying that 10 times fast. And just a straight three there, it's about as fast as Rose can go. So she's getting hung out the side. So is the yellow one. Really, who, who's going to blink first? Well, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Those boosts are very handy on those X-Wings, but you do want them focusing as well. So that red, uh, the red, red squadron expert is going to struggle to, to get in for some really meaningful shots next turn. Uh, Green is in a great position. Uh, unfortunately, Green would be in a much better position if the rest of the ships were right next to him. Um, yep. That's that's the big problem here with what Apollo has sort of done to delay this engagement is, yeah, he's, he's really split these X-Wings up and they really need to all fire on the same target. Get, a, um, get the tracers off, focus, target lock, and just pummel whatever you can get your shots into. Um, and I'm not feeling confident um, in Apollo's position here. I, uh, interesting to see. Yep, the one straight. Uh, it didn't. Oh, he's, I think his wings are already closed. No, they're open. I, don't, I wasn't sure what they decided on, and I don't think he's got a token out there. I think they are closed. I think he's just using the ship model. That's that's what he does in real life anyway. Um, ops for the barrel roll. Ops yep. for the barrel roll. Um, that's good. Uh, he he probably. Garvin, Garvin is a good ship to feed to the to the uh, to the block if you can, um, but he is also one of your strongest pieces as well. Although he doesn't really not as good as your Garvins and sorry your uh, your Kyles and your Benthics here and your and your Harris especially. Um, I'm I'm wondering, do we maybe see a layer stop and twist with? Um, oh, you probably don't need to. You can probably just do it too hard with Benthic if you want to try and pick that lane there. Yeah, too hard if you want to pick the lane. The challenge now is actually Garvin just being angled off. Mm. The boost there probably would have been a little bit better. Uh, but then again, yeah. that that puts you at a dangerous range away from Hera where you're not getting that unlimited focus happening. Probably telegraph Tom's next round here, actually, because 
the reason I uh, the reason I thought the barrel was so attractive initially was that he just wants to get Garvin out of Benthic's way for Benthic to execute another straight move. But it's just cut down his options now with regards to Garvin. The thing is about this list as well is that Garvin, while he's while he's a tank, he's also a, a, just the same size gun as these T70s. So he really needs to start or rather when the when the dice start flying you want Garvin to be rolling red dice as well so we'll see how this goes in the next round players are still setting dials i really think the person who turns and commits to these gas clouds first will lose the game i'll hold you to that um but i, I do agree and and i mean can we say has apollo committed to these gas clouds i guess his maneuver with green will probably determine that but yes i mean green Correct. probably just does green one I think Benthic moves before the X Wings. So that is correct. He, he could just have a one bank in there, keep the wings closed and barrel roll either side, pick the lane that um he wants once he's seen Benthic's move. Yep, so using Benthic there as a as a trigger for, for what he does and then he's got the, the single reposition options on the rest of his list as well. Double with Zari to actually counter whatever whatever Tom's thrown down with Benthic and, and actually Kyle as well, although Kyle's probably not the critical piece here. And we can't forget the Rose Coordinate as well. The Rose Coordinate could be very helpful. She's an I3 as well, so she moves at the same time as these X-Wings. So she can uh, do a Coordinate and, and give one of these X-Wings possibly a pre-move battle roll. Um, it could maybe get in a cheeky battle roll and... Mm, even just a too hard barrel roll from um, the yellow X-Wing and, and take a different lane, come in from a different angle. Yeah, and I, one thing that I've just realized about the way Apollo is flying this and, and maybe some of the Spanish guys who, who know him a little bit better than what we do uh, might be able to tell us is just looking at the list, we, we really thought Rose was in there. You get a pretty efficient body Although the stats aren't great, you've got a really great pilot ability for some consistency. Uh, but if if she's not, if she's hanging back and really being used for her coordinate ability. I'm wondering if I'm wondering if that's normal for Apollo, or if that's just a, a function of of this matchup. Whereas one of the guys mentioned in the chat, I just sorry, I can't remember who it was, um, really just said that you know Apollo definitely doesn't want to joust. Yeah, and he's that that's very clear from his setup and, and from the way he's flown since. Um we've got Michael Wells saying that he thinks Apollo is in a good position. Um and and I think um this turn will determine whether or not he was in a good position. Um it looks like Tom's accepting the fact that he's probably gonna take some shots into his um into his broadside here. Um it's uh oh, a boost with Kyle. Looks like he's yeah, getting like ready that. to pick this lane. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that's a good option. He's honestly, Benthic is not unhappy to take some shots here, even if they're not through the gas cloud. Um, most likely going to be range three. Uh, if Green has to do a barrel roll, oh, he's turned away. He's that, turned away. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Okay, that's <laughs> that's not what oh. I expected at all. Oh look, I look, I, I suspected. I, I saw it there as maybe an option, but but really I just wasn't sure. And you just really see here, Apollo is committed to skirting the edge of the board. He's absolutely, if, if somebody's committed to anything, he's committed to skirting the edge of the board. I'm going to say that now. So what we'll, what we'll see here, I reckon, is, is pushing the rest of his squad he the is, side there. Yeah. And, and actually that means that Turning in on Rose becomes an option for Tom. So maybe, the, maybe that's bait. I don't know, uh, but you know, I, I guess what that highlights, and thankfully, because we've still got another fifty minutes of this, is is this isn't going to last forever. No, no, and and something's going to give, uh, and uh, one, oh, yeah, a bit of a bit of a semi commit here from Red. Um, he could just do what Green did last turn. He's pretty much in a very similar position. He could just two bank away. And like you said, 
Apollo is so committed to this uh, board edge, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they were already married or engaged at least. Um, he has just really not wanted to enter the center of the board. Uh, and I agree, so, like you said, someone said earlier that the joust does not favor him, I don't think. And I, and I do agree there's a lot of defensive ability as well as offensive output from the rebels. And the power of that is that it's not decided in the activation phase. It's decided on each dice roll, whether Tom wants to play aggressive or defensive. Um, that's that's really the, the, the decision-making power of the rebel squad. And here's Tom. Garvin getting a bump into the back. He's done well to reset. Garvin did get a little bit out of position there. Um, and so he's decided instead of pushing in for an engage, he's going to give himself another turn to get ready uh, to, to to really set up a much better fully block uh, range two bubble engagement here for himself next turn. Um, what do you think, Tom? Uh, sorry, what do you think? Yeah, what do you think, Tom? It'd be great to ask Tom right now what he thinks. Um, Suresh, is... Apollo able to bring all these ships in uh, for a single engagement now? Or do you think green might be a little too far forward? Uh, do you think maybe rose is a little too far back? Yellow is a little too far back? Yeah, so the single answer, single word answer to the question is is no. And the reason for that is, is rose. But like I think we've highlighted, probably rose is in terms of the, the weapon just the least really the least important piece for Apollo you know, I... with the three Red Squadron experts and Zari uh, with the thread traces to power those three Red Squadron experts uh, being those uh, being those the main hitters here so that's what I think at the moment uh, is that no not this round uh, now I did say and, and, and somebody will clip it out and rewind it and, and toss it back at me uh, if I go back on it, is that the first person who turns in loses. And and I think we're going to see Tom come in here. I know that there's a couple of people in the chat there. I think it's uh, uh, JW4. Uh, yeah, Apollo can reassemble pretty quickly if he wants to. And uh, someone else there, Bathurst Bogan, says that Apollo's uh, positioned himself pretty well. Someone else, again, I just... Uh, can't remember who it's gone off my gone off my screen actually said that you know final salvo 13 dice to 11 um so so there's a couple of things still in play here uh, I, we'll I see th how we go jw4 has said that he uh, thinks that that uh, apollo has baited tom successfully um i uh i don't think so i think uh, if Tom had turned in and committed down that lane, that's probably the bait that Apollo was maybe looking for there. Um, I really, I don't think either player has bought into the oppose their opponent's strategy at all. They're both just committing to playing around the gas clouds not, and not turn in. I don't think anyone's been baited here at all. Um, did, no one is definitely in a terrible position. Um, both players can bring their guns straight into the middle to, to, to start the engagement if they want to. It just looks like neither of them want to make that decision just yet. Um, and I guess it's just about who's going to time that correctly. Uh, it, it it couldn't, maybe not even a bad idea um, to three talon green, even maybe three talon yellow, just, just change the angles a little bit. Um, uh, and bring everyone back together to sort of reform. If I had the beautiful Madden drawing, I would show you exactly what I mean. Um, but that's probably a terrible idea on itself as well. Just, I don't know, I, I feel like something has to happen. It's, we're, we're nearing, we're about seven and a half minutes away from halfway through this game, and not a single dice has been rolled yet. Uh, I really am hoping that the players um, will make a good decision and show us some dice. Hell, just run over a cloud or something. Yeah, give us something. It's a <laughs> dice game, guys. It's not a it's not a beautiful, pretty model ship flying around the board game. Sometimes it feels like that. Uh, actually, actually, it is, and and that's actually the one of the most amazing things about acting. There we go. It There's the both. turn in, two turn from Tom. So this, if now we'll see if JW four was correct. Uh, uh, yeah, let's see if. Um, Let's see if Tom has been baited. 
the the range on that. I just missed that range, but it looked like um, Rose may cop a range three shot if she doesn't barrel roll um, or bump. We'll see what he's done with red here. Red, red is a red is a real key indicator. Um, I have a feeling red is just going to four straight. Well, right now we've like everything set. So so Apollo's going to move his entire list now that Tom's moved Benthic and Kyle. Slow move, one bank. Okay, probably a, a maybe a barrel roll in to get a nice too hard, too hard in to try and catch uh, any of the ships going down that lane. Maybe. Yeah. Now the foils are open. That's what the card says. Ah, okay. We're we're operating on no, they they're closed on the card. Ah, uh, closed on uh, the token is closed. The card is open. The card is I, closed. So I'm seeing open. Anyway. I think that's a bit of a that is a, that is a glitch. I think, but it is it is closed. I think the, he's probably yeah, the operating on the token. Token says closed, and he just barrel rolled to the right there. So the wings are closed. Oh, he's he's running away again. Um. Okay. Maybe he's I'm taking just... these uh, this final salvo talk very seriously. <laughs> it feels like he's taking it very maybe too seriously. Maybe maybe a bit too seriously. But the thing is here is that you actually, if you, you once you actually do a couple of points of damage to Rose, you just can't do that anymore. That is true, and and Rose is in a precarious spot here. Um, even if she doesn't take shots this turn, she is she's in a a pretty tough spot. Um, the three bank here is red, so I suspect perhaps a three straight. Um, <laughs> Fun rock. I'm not going to say that. This is a, this is a, this is. I don't. I mean, we can swear on this stream. It doesn't really bother me. But um, I don't like being baited into saying that. So we're not going to say it. But I appreciate. I appreciate the pun. Only a two straight out of Rose. Now speaking of bait, is Rose bait? Well, I mean, Rose is bait if other ships are in the attack arc. To give her some rerolls, um, what's? I mean, she she's not a fast little ship. I mean, three bank is red, and he's got a two bank, too hard. Maybe a barrel roll out to the left. Then I don't know. Does does should Tom commit now? I mean, it's obvious he's committing down this lane. Does he commit straight down to that left hand side of the board and try and catch Rose, and leave his flank open? I think, ooh, uh, just to roll, roll to the right, Hera's trailing. I think Tom is showing a not commit doing that. Well, he can't leave. Anti-commit. He, he needs to leave her out the, out the back just as much as um, you want Rose out on her own. Uh, if, you, if Hera takes, even though Hera has three green dice, if she takes too much damage... Um, that's 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 very bad for you. She can really do some work on her own in the end game, um, and she does so much work in the early mid game for the rest of the squad. Um, yeah, he he really wants really wants to keep her safe. So that 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 barrel roll to the right makes sense to me. Just just to just to keep her safe. Okay, so we now finally have a commitment. Let's see if uh, your prediction comes to fruition. Tom was the first one to turn into the clouds. He doesn't have a bad spot. Um, he. But he does now have a 50-50 choice of, do I punch into Rose? Um, that's going to have to extend him pretty far through the gas clouds. Really, only Benthic can get a really meaningful shot there. Um, do you maybe just stop and just let, uh, let Apollo make a decision? Yep. Not stop, necessarily. I don't think you punch you punch Benthic in. No. That's that, that that leads to anger, hate, the dark side, all sorts of badness. Uh, you you might maybe get away with a one forward or a one bank. Try and keep that central cloud in between yourself and as much of these X wings as you like, um, and uh, see if Polo will actually commit now that Tom is has pushed himself into a lane so i will i will i'm going to reserve my judgment yeah. uh, that's what i think I, I i don't like i don't like hanging benthic out to dry at the prospect of, of doing some damage to rose 
Yeah, um, and and Spot in the chat, uh, known as known by his real name to me, Rick, uh, has said uh, that Rose has been left behind, and I presume she was bait. I think the two straight there was very obviously meant to be bait. Um, I don't think he really cares too much about losing Rose at this point if it means his three X-Wings can get their shots in. But you make a good point. Two, two of those X-Wings really can't get in for a meaningful shot uh, if Tom falls for this bait. I think it might be a, a setup to just get, again, get Tom out of position. That's that's what Apollo is going for. He's trying to break Tom's patience. Uh, it's like an interrogation. He's just trying to wear him down, mentally fatigue him. Uh, he's faked him twice now. He really has faked twice with a turn in, um, and he's hoping that that's sort of breaking Tom mentally. It feels go. like a very well, mental two, game. Two straight. So he's sort of going for it. Um, he's left himself in the middle of the board enough that a rotate next turn uh, will get him right back into the fight uh, without putting everyone else out yeah. of position. So that's a good move. It's it's not it's a non-committal to the. Um... Yeah, I actually really like this position from Tom here. Uh, He's really given Benthic and Kyle great uh, decision making for next turn to to not totally fall for this bait here. But if Rose doesn't go fast enough, she's taken a shot from Benthic, and Benthic's still got three red dice. Yep. Oh, here we go. Wings are opening. So are you turning in? You're turning in. Combat. Excellent. Oh, a one bank. Okay. So that, that, that is very good for Tom. Again, that's not going to be a good shot from that red X-Wing. Um, and he will struggle to bring that arc through that middle that middle lane there, just to the left, pilot left of, of Benthic. Um, this is looking much better for Tom's layer next turn, although that's a very obvious move. I'm not sure if Apollo can do much to mitigate the advantage that Tom has there. Maybe a too hard from yellow, but then red's out on his own. Yeah, red's, in a, red's really committed. To that single channel, whereas yellow yellow has an escape. We've still got greens just out of position a little bit here, and we've still got Zari. I, I like the idea of like a, a three turn and 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 a and a, maybe even a boost and and try and get your th traces off. Yeah, use that use that flexibility that your squad has, where they don't need to stick together. Get her fast, get her behind. Tom doesn't have nearly enough. Nope. Okay, straight through the middle. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing either. Um, a barrel roll right or a focus even. Again, you don't want to commit too hard down that lane because Tom does have the opportunity to really make that lane uh, make that lane work for him next turn, especially yeah, when those layer stops. Yeah, but she's, a, she's an RZ too, so you know, you've True. still got your options. What does she care? What does she care? She's just two hards and focus rotate. And yeah, probably not a great shot this turn from uh, the green Rex, but through the cloud, but really just left that option open for next round. And I do like that here from Apollo because it's left the most options open for most of his ships, uh, with the exception probably being uh, Red, 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 who is more or less committed to the uh, channel he is in uh, with a cloud there just in the way unless he wants to either run over it or maybe maybe a big bank will fit, but we'll see. Now, here we go. I think we're finally, finally, Cam. After whew, 40 minutes, we're going to see some dice rolls. Dice! Dice! Here we go. Uh, obstructed, so it means that that shot back could potentially be obstructed, but there's a bit of a funny angle there on Garvin. And we saw in the last game there was an obstruction into a non-obstruction, so um, I think Apollo's pretty happy with that. Uh, a focus? Hey, what do you know? Spend it. Throw it to Hera. Happy days for Hera. She's sitting with three focuses now. Uh, and totally yeah. safe. Yeah, plenty of paint. Yeah, not not a huge chance of doing damage there. And, uh, Apollo's probably not too upset about spending a focus token there on the defense. Not that he needed to. Uh, we've got the next shot here coming from Kyla Natties. Yes. Yeah, no point yeah, the taking shot, damage. The shot back's pretty rubbish, so you might as well. Now we're going to see 
We saw Zari likely out of range. And we'll get some shots through the cloud here at Kyle and Garvin, I reckon. Oh no, Zari's Ooh, in, just clips him. in range. Here we go. Now, I don't want to spoil anything, but I don't think Benthic takes any damage here. Well, he's, that's because he's eating the Thread Tracer. Oh, even better. I don't think the Thread Tracer hits. Uh, oh, we'll it's, see. A, it's a Thread Tracer. Sorry, hang on. Yeah. I so, can possibly dodge that. He will he's, definitely dodge it. Uh, he's just got to... you probably got to check the range. Oh, no, the, the range looks okay. So, Jin Erso, focus... Changes their focus to an evade. And takes nothing. Yep. No and in the... It's that... Seinfeld and the yada, yada, yada. Yeah, the yada, 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 yada. That happens. That That's... I think that's the one thing that I, I often forget when I'm approaching this Heritani squad is that Jin Erso... Uh, that Jin Erso um, evade token pass. It's so powerful. Um, and it just... That's, that's what I was saying earlier. That you get to make the decision whether you'll be defensive or offensive in the middle of the com of the engagement phase. You don't have to make that decision any other time. It's just as the shots happen. It's so powerful. Yeah, that's like like back to throwing back to back to 1.0 because we've just gone there already with Heratani. That's that's Palpatine levels of of decision sort of ability. It's nostalgic. That's what it is. So um, hit crit from that little red X-wing. Uh, sorry, the what color was he? Uh, he was red. Red. red he red. was red. Sorry, the the white confused me. Um, so the red Rexpert gets nothing uh, into into Kyle. Now we've got a shot into Benthic. This time Benthic has no focus token. Gets two. Benthic's range three obstructed, so probably Who are we kidding? fine. Yep, he's fine. Benthic has a focus token, it's just that Hera's holding it for him. Oh, this is an unobstructed shot. So um, Benthic can only either get an evade token or a focus token from Hera for this one. So there's a chance. That's two. Blank's here. No, he's fine. Right. We're finally seeing dice rolled, which feels so good. Um, and nothing happens, nothing which happens. just feels so bad. <laughs> so here we go. This is this is that the trap that um, Apollo set. Let's see if it backfires on him here. Um, there is a, one other ship in the attack arc, so Rose will get one reroll. Uh, two hits. Two. I uh, should be fine. A reroll. A couple of calculates. Here we go. Oh, you need a reroll. Re Have faith. Clasp your hands and pray to the rose. And she gets yeah. it. Yeah, dubs calculate. Drop them both. So I was going to say this was a completely ineffectual um, engagement, but it actually favours Tom in the sense that one of those thread, thread tracers is gone. So yep, It's just going to slow down um, Apollo's efficiency for the next round of shooting here. Yeah, because if he'd been able to connect that into Benthic, um, it would have been good, but I don't think he's going to get quality shots into Benthic either. They will... Yellow can, um, with maybe a too hard boost, or a close your wings barrel roll. Um, but that, that gas cloud is positioned perfectly for Tom here. Stop, rotate... Um, just looks happy. But Tom could even go crazy and just bank around the cloud, thinking maybe that Apollo is expecting the stop. Yeah, I don't know that I like the stop, actually. It does open I, I, him up. Uh, uh, sorry, close, reduce one of his defense dices, dice. Mostly because I, th I think that he just risks... Benthic getting nuked. Like I'm wondering if actually pushing pushing Benthic in towards those those two experts being uh, yellow and red maybe blocks them up a little. You still get your actions because you're moving first. If they bump there, they got they've got nothing. They're not shooting you. They're shooting someone else. 
and also I, I reckon there's enough there's enough out there, uh, the old good old target rich environment, uh, for Benthic to still get a good three dice or maybe even a four dice shot off, and and Rose has to go somewhere and and won't be going that fast, uh, so we'll see how we go. Yeah, it looks like the the players are forgetting a couple of triggers here. Um, should have been a measure from Hera uh, when when Tom activated her ability. Um, it, I'm I'm very confident it was in. I think he did measure the the arc at one point. Um, uh, but yeah, we we are not allowed to jump in and, and remind the guys. They're also uh, they did uh, flip the charge on the um, thread tracers. We've updated the we have updated the overlay for that now. Um, yeah, sorry, that was just some housekeeping, just just catching up on a few of... We are on a 90-second delay, uh, so I um, we, we do take a little bit to see what you guys come through with, but please keep commenting in the chats. Uh, we do have uh, Jim running the running the Space Slugs chat for us today. Thanks, Jim. So what are you going to do if, you're, if your name's Apollo, you're playing for the Spanish team, Suresh, um, what are you doing with those with those red squadron experts? Uh, red one, big bank to the left. Yellow, two turn left. Green. Uh, ooh, green, green, green. Actually, the straight option is still good. Uh, Rose kind of wants to turn in. Yeah, too hard from Rose is probably the happiest move. Um, yeah, I think a three bank from Red. The only thing is, if 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 Tom sees that three bank, he may just three forward, three bank even his Kyle, um, and maybe do a boost in there somewhere just to try and gum up the works here. Um, that does sort of hang Kyle out, but Kyle can sit there. Sorry, Kyle can sit there with an evade two focus tokens um, plus. Uh, Hera's support. So he, he, he's not going to hate tanking some shots. Um, uh, nerves of steel to do that. But hey, you know, you've got... If, if he can deny actions from these X-Wings, then their shots and their defense aren't going to be nearly as, as potent. Um, and that might be the key, because those three X-Wings, if they shoot into the same target, uh, fully modded, then, yeah, it's it's going to hurt. So if he can block it up and... Yep. Cause some bumps, deny deny shots into Kyle. Who is the correct? I think someone in the chat said two tubes. Uh, Michael said two tubes is not the target. Um, I totally agree. Two tubes is not the target. Uh, he has more health. He's got two defense dice most of the time. Um, you really need to kill Kyle. But those uh, those Genoso evades are just very tough to get through. So you need to get every single shot happening. They all need to be going into that one target because you've got to burn through these tokens. Um, and I don't like Apollo's positioning to get that to happen because yellow's not going to get meaningful shots onto Kyle. Um, green and red can, and so can... Uh, what is the name of that ship? What's her name again? Zari. It is Zari. Zari, um, Zari can, but Zari's got two dice. You want those Rexperts firing into the same ship. I think you've actually just answered the question there, and that means you don't jam Kyle into the middle. Yes, I did. I did answer my own question. You're right. Um, and, 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 but we we had to just talk talk ourselves through that one because yeah, it's a really it's a really attractive move, just unless your name is Kyle Katarn and Jin Urso's on board, because that's just the that's the the key piece in in Tom's list. It, it actually is a significant. Uh, target firstly for for Apollo, but you know it's, it also really, really powers quite a bit of what what Tom does. So there's a layer the activation. Sorry, a layer activation. Uh, and Benthic's doing the stop and the turny. He's doing the spin. A pirouette. Hammer time. I think I think that the, the stop is good. This is the time that you use the rotate the closed wings because he's probably taking. Maybe two shots um, from the X-Wings, and at least one of them will be obstructed. Um, Yellow does have a nice too hard boost around. Um, I expect probably a stop from Kyle, maybe? Um, I suspect. And then a one forward from from Garvin. 
and Garvin just again, like oh, we said earlier, Garvin's happy to take shots. He's got unlimited focus. into range there to pass the token with Hera. Wow. So yeah, they definitely actually should have measured that last last round because it, Hera did do a, 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 a token pass and it was a lot closer than I think uh, yeah. the players were thinking it was. Getting a, a, a few follows in the chat, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, we are going to be continuing to stream as much as we possibly can throughout XTC and beyond. Um, so follows just encourage us even more. Uh, we are narcissists and we love the attention. And we love X-Wing. So marrying those two things together just feels good. This is, this is why, actually, I don't like the stop. The, from the, the too hard from yellow, that's why you don't like the stop? And the turn in from Rose... Ben Thick could be wrecking face right now. And here's the coordinate. Um, what coordination is he going to do? He's doing a coordinate uh, boost from red. Ah, there we go. That was the secret. That was the trick to get red in. Uh, and red f 4Ks. Uh, okay. I mean, 4K, but okay. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, he didn't... I mean, if red two hards in there, red probably just explodes. So that wasn't a bad move. Um, and a lot of sometimes the unexpected move can can really throw your opponent. Turn Zari probably a focus rotate. Um, looks like both players have sort of tried to delay the real engagement here. Um, well, this is the real engagement now. <laughs> like we're here finally. <laughs> Took but, us forty minutes, fifty minutes. I mean that four K just is like yeah no we're we're taking shots but it's still not going to be meaningful shots. Um, but. <laughs> Garvin's pretty... We haven't seen green move yet, but Garvin's probably pretty happy with just a one bank here, even a one forward. Garvin... Zari's out of there. Zari's not rotating nothing. She's out of there. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Garvin... Garvin just doesn't mind. Like, you could... You could pog Garvin onto the table somewhere, and there's a blast from the past reference, but you could pog Garvin onto the table somewhere, and he just doesn't mind right now. Okay. Um... Yeah, Apollo really doesn't want to commit to an engagement here. Um, well, he already has. I like, don't. Yeah, that's why yellow, yellow's, uh, yellow is is kind of like high. If Garvin's done a one straight, he's done the one bank. Uh, oh, it's not looking. Cr I, I actually, I actually. I'd stay there. I sort of favor. Uh, he's got a good shot into green, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, he takes a lock. He's going for it. Oh, he goes on to red. I don't. He doesn't have a shot on red. Am I, I think blind? that might just be a next round thing because he he's banking on a token. I mean, this whole list is a token bank, but he's banking on a token, and yes, pun intended, <laughs> with Hera here to to actually power up power up the whole Garvin train. So I don't mind the lock, and and I'm gonna a hundred percent say right now that Tom is definitely a better player than I am. So he. He knows what he's doing. I can't accept that. You're an amazing player, Suresh. And an amazing commentator. And a great friend. Oh, look, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm... I'm trying to think back, and I don't think I don't know if it's ever happened. The maximum number of times, like, like, Tom is lifetime at worst, like X and 1 against me. It is a rare sight to, to see me defeat Tom in a match. Okay, so uh, the decision was made. Kyle passed the focus token to Hera, uh, and Hera now has a range one shot into red. Um, oh, he's yeah, probably happy to spend that focus. Yeah. Hey, that's damage. We finally saw damage. damage. And that is shields down on red, red squadron expert. Updating the overlay now. Got that, that cheeky focus that stops the heroic roll. Um, oh, that, that shot into green is obstructed. Um, I don't think Red has a shot on Garvin. So, yeah, you're probably happy to just fire into Green. Green's got a shot. Uh, maybe obstruct. I think it's definitely obstructed into... Yeah, that one's obstructed. Benthic. Yeah. Um, but Yellow has that unobstructed shot. Probably range one if it's in arc. Oh, that's that's the perfect dice there for Garvin. Spends the focus, hands it back. Doesn't care. Oh, they'll take one. Just through the cloud there. Two shields. Oh, the cloud. That's right, yeah. One. One shield. 
Oh, it's so exciting seeing dice and health is changing on the on on the on the on the uh, yeah. on the board. Oh, and Kyle is is um, this is good good I think on Apollo to to just not let Tom take all his shots into one ship. Um, he's now trying to look around. Does he want it? one more damage into red? We'll get him the half points. Um, Fun work, I'm always flirting. I have two modes, sleeping and flirting. My wife loves it. And Mr. Bondo, you are 100% correct. In fact, you are 110% correct. So who do you, what, what shot do you take here, Suresh? You've got a, a two dice gun through the gas cloud. At, at, oh, yep. Yeah, well, he's answered the Three. question. I, I think oh, I take that shot as well. You've got no. one damage to get half on red, and then you're, you're sitting on top. The rubbish shot. Yeah. It's a rubbish shot. I don't like it. <laughs> and uh, Kyle farts out the side, um, and Red doesn't smell it. Red's got no Red. shot. That's that's very good for Tom. Um, yeah, that that was really what he was hoping for there. Oh, unobstructed. Unobstructed. I thought for sure it would be obstructed. So Benthic has a focus, one and a half focuses. Or one uh, and, and half an evade. He has to make that decision. So he's possibly taking two shots. It's hard to make a call on that yellow. Shot. Yellow's got him. Yellow's got him. I think so as well. But I don't know. I thought that was going to be obstructed. So and I'm wearing my glasses too. Yellow's yellow's got him at range one. So this could be a real good turnaround here for for Apollo if he can just burn, get two really good shots here. Tom's, exactly. Tom's Tom's uh, very thankful that those target locks didn't go down last turn. Hit crit. And yeah, you nothing. probably you probably spend um, the the hero token for the evade there, or cop it on the shields. Or check, check, the check range. the range first, Tom, naughty boy. There, there we go. go. So Look, you, you might as well. Yeah, in case anyone was confused there, um, that was a Hera passing a focus token because uh, Benthic gained a focus token. Jin also turned it into an evade. Oh, you don't. That's oh. not. That's what you don't want to see from that shot there. Just two. It's getting one through, um, guaranteed. Two. It's two through. Yep. Two. So, not really what Apollo wanted to see, and now we've got Benthic. Got a good... Wait, sorry, Rose. Can't forget Rose. So Benthic is shields down. I forgot how to count. Uh, Rose has two dice and looks like a couple two other ships in the attack arc as well. Two rerolls. And one calculate. We'll need the two rerolls. Rose heroic. Yep, that's Heroic Rose Edition and just one hit. So can you roll paint, Benthic, two tubes? Now, do you spend that? Yeah, Tom, Tom spent it. Benthic gets to shoot still, so... Yep, just going just gonna to avoid the damage there. Avoid the half. And looking, looking for some variants... He's looking for some points. Give me some points. And the damage card would be nice. So, so we've got shields down on red and shields down on Benthic. Uh, he's just chucking dice and he's only got one crit. So it's into two dice and he gets oh. it. Close. It was close. Okay, so we finally got some damage on the board. No points. Um, yeah, I uh, I do think... I mean, what, yellow's got a... Green's got a 4k if he wants it. Yellow could risk... Um, could risk a talent, but probably even just a 4k as well. Um, red's yeah, you lock can do both. Red's locked into a blue manoeuvre. 
Uh, he's got a one one forwards and banks, two forwards and banks, and three forwards. Yep. Um, no, f given how Apollo has flown it so far, I actually am going to predict a three forwards. Okay. Okay. I feel like you kind of just want to bank in, get in Garvin's way, and threaten Benthic. That's just me, though. Players are taking a, quite a bit of time over their dials. I suppose a one bank... Uh, the one bank blocks... I mean, where do you send Garvin here? Because you probably don't one forward him because, well, you're not really... That's probably going to get blocked, uh, right? 4k isn't terrible. Although Maybe. if you can you can find a way to give him a token, and you can because because Benthic 2 tubes is right there, so that's not a problem. Um, and for 4k is an option. Um, whether whether it's the best option, I don't know. I, I I think what is really playing into the minds of probably both of the players is uh, yellow and red. Sorry, yellow and green. I promise I'm not colorblind. Um, with that. 4K or even the Talon roll that you mentioned, uh, that's really threatening, really, really threatening Tom with these arcs here, covering quite a bit of the board. Because I know, I know there's a been a bit of talk in the chat there about the dice luck and etc. Uh, but Apollo didn't give himself the best shots in that round. Yeah, definitely. Um, Tom, Tom had the much better shots. Uh, he had a range one there from. He had a range one from Hera uh, and uh, a very decent shot from... Um, it was the Hera shot, wasn't it? It was the Hera shot that did it. Um, but yeah, that, that red was sitting there tokenless. Um, so just a prime prime target there for Hera's shot. And the shot from Garvin into green was also nice and juicy for him as well. Um, he, he did get the three, the three shields off Benthic. Um, which, yep. I mean, if you look at... Actually, there's a shield down on green as well. I, don't, I did update yes. that. Um, but, I mean, it's not a terrible trade, is it? I mean, there's only four ships in Tom's squad and Benthic has lost his shields. Yeah. Now, the other thing to, of course, note, of course, is that there's only 12 minutes left. Oh, yes. And Leia is gone too for the next two turns. Correct. So you probably won't see Leia again. And it is zero zero. So let's let's actually have a look at the points because I think um, obviously the zero points either side at the moment. But Harris and Dula is worth the same as one of these red red squadron experts. Garvin's forty six. Two tubes is the most expensive ship on the board at sixty one points. So getting half on an X-wing is not worth the same as half on Benthic, and and right. um, it's Tom needs to, you know, if he loses half on Benthic, he needs to kill an X-wing or take two halves. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Hera probably hard ones to the right. Um, she to the right, I like. Yep. Um, yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't have the two straight there, and. Anything else just puts her at a position for ability. You you will put sort of uh, kind of protect your flanks there, but like your your one A wing against two X wings, and and that really only ends one way. I I just really wondering how aggressively Tom is going to either push into the center of the board, or think about halving red and then dealing with yellow and green. It's sort of, you know, which, how much your resources, i.e. your ships that you, you point at, at which problem is, is probably what Tom's thinking about right now. Yeah, yeah, that is the, that is the decision, right? It's, it's resource management at this point for Tom. Um, I, I, sorry, uh, JW in the, in, in the chat is mentioning dice, um, which is such a hot button issue in X-Wing. Um, I definitely fall into that trap as well of complaining about dice. But the the mantra that I have started using for myself is um, 
the, the, the dice don't decide the game, the players do. Sometimes you get good dice, and a good player can capitalize on good dice, uh, and sometimes a good player can work through that bad dice, and obviously sometimes the dice are just the absolute worst. Um, I yep. But I think in, in this game in particular, Tom had Tom has still lots of mods. Um, he is sometimes you don't even if you're rolling all that paint, um, Tom's just got the mods to back it up as well. And that's just the power of this Heritani list is mods, right? And Ben uh, Kyle's got a target lock on red this turn. Um, if he gets a shot into red, that red's probably if not halved, there's yeah. a good chance red dies if, if if Garvin gets a shot and someone else gets a shot. Now, speaking of dice, I, I have two mantras. One is that if we if we all hated dice, we, we'd go play chess or go or something like that. I agree. I do and agree. The, and the other one is, and, and that, that was probably the half serious one, and the, the absolutely not serious one is, of course, hashtag X-Wing Fitness. Can you explain to the chat what hashtag X-Wing Fitness is? Yep. So every time, and 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 every, I know a bunch of you guys um, have had the great option here in the double header uh, to watch some of the Australian players. Every time Nobby says A wing, do a push up. Every time Nobby says heroic, do a push up. Every time Nobby complains about his dice, do a push up. But most critically, every time you complain about your own dice, do three push ups. And that's something we can all live by, I think. And also, we'll be a lot, we'll be a lot fitter. Uh, oh yeah, sensitive. you'll get ripped. I, I think Tom must follow that because he's so handsome and beautiful. Oh, definitely. So, um, we're seeing some decisions now from Tom. He's done a four straight with ben, sorry, uh, it was a three straight with Benthic, trying to jam up that that Reds escape route there. Um, has he yeah. blocked a 4k for Garvin though? And actually, you know what? I've just realized he's probably not even 4k with Garvin. He's probably just happy to do a one forward and bump. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that uh, might, actually, that might bump into... He doesn't into, want to do his bump into red. Yeah, yeah. So I just realized the angle there. Oh, that's... Oh, no. He's got a range one there on Kyle. Which he's probably I like not this, happy about. I like this from Apollo. This is good. Although he, he is switching targets, which is not good, but but dealing with, dealing with Kyle, that said, with seven minutes in the game, it's not like there's going to be that much more token passing because there aren't going to be that many more rounds. But um, I, I, I wonder if Tom's overcommitted to the center of the board here. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what Garvin's doing here where he can capitalize on red. And well, we're seeing a coordinate. Maybe a, a lock? That's what she's there for. Yeah, you can yeah. have a lock. Yeah, that's four dice. Um, even with all of his uh, evade token shenanigans, um, Kyle is uh, not happy about that. Four dice into two. Look, that's okay. Oh, oh well, for it's now. It's not looking it's good. Four, four dice into two. It doesn't matter how many evade tokens you get, you've only got two green dice. Ooh, a bank move here. That's... It's pro he's probably very happy about that. C Garvin could have done a, a three talent knowing that red wouldn't be there anymore. I, I think that might still get him some arc. I wonder if. Oh no, it's a, it's a bit silly. Garvin Garvin isn't chasing Zari. Surely that four K is blocked though. Tom will be very upset. I mean, he'll still get a shot into Rose, but it's not. Yeah, the four K four K is not happy. He did get the block on red, which I, I know he did want there. He's still got the, the side gun from Kyle. Although Red Red's got some like in fact this is this is pretty much almost almost perfect for Apollo. He's got three three X wings all shooting Kyle. And Rose. And that's the power right. of the squad, right? They're, they're, they're so yep, there's the four K. Oh it fits. Oh, it we fits. were wrong. We don't know how I to play X Wing. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that, because I'm supposed to be unbiased, but sometimes I like being wrong. Wow, uh, that that could I mean, if if Tom gets the same dice he got last time, and uh, Apollo gets the same dice he got, that's a dead red. Um, but I suspect we'll lose half on red here, just just dice being average. Um, but Kyle is not looking happy. Tom takes the focus uh, with 
Hera there because he knows he can pass it off as an evade token to his little friend um, Kyle. Yep. Kyle is fully recharged as well. Um, so we'll see what happens. Kyle can take, can take these it. shots. Oof. Nice red dice already, but probably safe. Snipe, snipe. Yeah, lots of paint. And range one into Rexpert. Red Rexpert. There we oh. go. Some swings and some roundabouts here. He has to spend, oh, has to spend some uh, resources. Oh. Well, not really. Well, the lock. Okay, fine. It's a resource. It's one resource. That's true. Okay, you got me. So this this could go bad. This could be blanks into blanks. I mean, I'll knock on wood for Tom. No, it's fine. So I'll, I'll shush. Yep, and you'll get that back. So he That'll ends up passing evade. the focus to um yep. to Kyle and turns it into an evade, which is so the reason that he's done that is because that then allows um. Hera to then pass and evade again. So Ooh. that's a living red ex red squadron expert, which Tom still alive can't complain about. I mean, that's a fantastic amount of dice into into red there. Um, but Kyle could kill red um, before he gets to shoot. Obviously, red will get a return shot, red being initiative back. three, but yep. could still do it. Could still um, make make red a, a sad boy. And here we go. Now there's three minutes left. Like we could see some weird, crazy scenario where this is the last round. It's entirely possible. There's there's still a whole heap of ships that need to shoot. In fact, I think it's probable. Oof. So here we go. We need natties from red to live. Doesn't, Doesn't quite get, it. get them. So he does explode. Um, that gives Tom 44 points. But if Kyle, and I'm sure Kyle will at least live through this... Um, but Tom really can't lose. If he loses half on Benthic, uh and Kyle, half on yep, Kyle, he, yep, that's, that's that's the game. That's the game. Ooh, oh, look out! That's that's solid a, shot. And they, there's, there's the dice the, back, right? That, yeah, that's yeah, like like this is this is the same sort of variance kind of thing, and spends the evade to take just two. Um, but he's now dangerously close to losing half, and, and Benthic is not far from half either. And really, all he's done is kill an X-Wing. And here's Rose to, to secure that half on on, on Benthic. Did he ping? Did he ping anyone? He, yeah, probably on Benthic. He's, he's rolling two dice. I rolled three. He rolled three, Sorry, the third yeah, one. He was hiding. Yeah. Oh, Benthic spends the focus to take one, but that does give up half. This is this is this is good game. Well played. Yeah, it looks like um so Tom is still in the lead by 44 points, but unless he's able to uh, he's, guess... he's one damage away from from giving half up on on Kyle. I I don't suspect this will end well. With 70 seconds to go in the game, this is pretty much it. That's what he needed. That's There's what he the needed. half. Oh, and, and he's got the lock as well. The, yeah, yeah. yeah dropped the lock. Yep. yep. That's that. That's not going to be a dead Kyle, but it could be. Roll those dice, Tom. So, focus and then can pass the Hera token to make yep. it an evade. Take two more damage. Kyle's alive on one. Uh, yellow's still got a shot. Yep. Uh, it was 30 seconds to go. So, yeah, that's... That's, Roll the dice. That puts Apollo, puts Apollo in the lead. Um, and then he needs to try and get three damage into red, which I don't see happening. Actually, he can't. That's it. That's GG's. Yeah, it's, that's, he's going to roll the dice now. And accept three. See, there's the dice. Yeah, there's... That's why yep, we don't like to talk about dice uh, on stream, because... Take him now, set your dial, and... Yeah. So that's a that's a dead Kyle. Yep. Well played there by Apollo. That was um that was very good. That's the time there. Um That is time. That was I'm not sure how the players will call it there. Uh, they could probably fit one more round in if they're feeling cheeky. Nah, but he's, no, he's yeah, just... no, that's it. That's game. Um
Oh wow. man, what a turnaround there at the end. Yep, that was. And and hat tip to Apollo. Um, he, he really really had his plan set in that he'll he'll try and and minimize the minimize that engagement time. Uh, you, that said, you see pretty much at the end of the the end of the game with what three rounds of engagement. Tom actually had no tokens left, so this this list is beatable, even though it's the sort of the, you know, it's a, a list that's popular enough to get its own name. <laughs> um, but really, really well played from Apollo, I have to say. That said, I I, I want to also say, uh, Tom did, Tom flew this list pretty well as well. Um, you just saw, he just didn't get enough time to, to keep going. Um, what happens if this if this goes on another round or two? Well, I mean, we'll never know. Uh, but I think Tom Tom still flew that well. He kept his ships in formation, like you said, Cam. That was the the critical thing that Tom needed to do, or you know, is to stay stay blocked up and maximize his token passing. He actually did that and actually engaged really effectively. So, you know, it's still really really good X wing to watch. Yeah, I think I mean that, that those last few turns were very exciting. Um, and it really was key decisions that got made that that really swung the game. Um, a, a big congratulations to both players. I think they played a fantastic game of X-Wing. Um, Apollo's plan, it seemed... I mean, hopefully he, he planned it out, but it seemed like he really did just want to delay the game long enough that that um, he could do something like this, just take some real good shots. Um, because I think the mid to end game... Because really, we, we did sort of burn burn through about 40 minutes of positioning um, so nearly nearly 50 by the time we got many full engagements yeah and i think that apollo was possibly apollo's plan um knowing that tom would have a much stronger end game than he would be able to um and so he sort of just removed the end game by, by extending the, the the early game so um yeah we're big ups we're actually going to try and get tom um and apollo both in the chat, if possible, um, try and do a post game post game interview. So don't go running anywhere just yet. Uh, we're hoping to be able to to chat to both of the guys and just see just see how they're both feeling now. I'm sure I can tell you Apollo's probably feeling really good and Tom's probably feeling really sad. Um, but both players have done a really good game of X Wing here, and um, the Spanish players have just been just indomitable. They've been so good. Um, yeah, I, I really do think that they're they're in a position to keep just trudging forward. And I think that weak break they had probably helped them. Um, but these guys are good. Uh, yeah, was... no, certainly. Uh, first time I've seen some of these guys, but look, massive support in the in the chat for the Spanish team. I think we've had, you know, in both days that, that the Space Slugs have been streaming. So thank you very much, firstly, for, for taking the time to actually, you know, watch the games and, and listen to Cam and myself and Tom and Jim talk. Um, thank you. Um, because you know, having having you guys there to follow along with us, you know, give us your thoughts, tell us what these guys are like. You know, your your guys there in, over in Spain, it's been really great to have you along, um, and really great to watch you guys play. It's four one now, by the way. Don't forget, Cam. Um, so that's actually sealed the sealed the round for yeah. Team Spain. So congratulations, Team Spain. Um, you're really, really, really outplayed. I think Team Australia. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, yeah. um, being an Australian myself, but but you can't deny it. Um, definitely, definitely, uh, you know, had the had the better some of the better strategies maybe um, that we've seen, especially tonight uh, with. Um, All right, Apollos. so I just got confirmation from the guys that we're going to jump into them. Uh, oh, sorry, I think Tom is in. Um, Tom is in the chat now, so uh, Suresh, just give me one second. Okay. All right, so we're going to just jump in here. I've got Tom. Um, I've got Tom here with me. Uh, Tom, you got Suresh and myself here in the room with you. How are you feeling after that one? Yeah, good, mate. Yeah, 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 good. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so my opponent is just about to join. Here he is, Apollo. Um, good. Yes, that was a very tactical game. Very tactical. Um, I was very, very much tactical, expecting yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Thank you again, Apollo. That was fantastic to to play against thank, you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to you, thank you to you, uh, Tom. I enjoyed it a lot. It was yeah, it so was, hard. Yeah, it was great. The, it was really the, good. The, the, the hardest, the hardest games I, I, I got in my life. I okay. promise. Well, that's uh, that's that's nice to hear for sure. Um, so yeah, so in testing Apollo, um, we did a lot of uh, joust preparation because I expected you with such a joust heavy squad. Um, to try and out joust me um, because um, I found that um, the your opening engagement in testing um, was uh, quite mediocre but the middle to late game strength in your squad was quite high um, so I'm glad we didn't joust because I feel like that made uh, the, the, the game a little bit more interesting for me personally um, so yeah, yeah it was really interesting and um, uh I tried to avoid, you know, going into the gas clouds. Um, and so when I know, we, I know. I'm not sure if you can see my, my hands on the stream, but when we saw this gas cloud, I thought you gave me a good position to try and use layer to turn. Um, and I was just hoping that, you know, my dice modifications with my evades would uh, prevent me from taking half health on Benfic, and then I'd be able to kill, a, kill an X-Wing. That was my plan. Um, yeah. I... I... I, I think I call the layer layer moment layer time, and yeah. that is why I do the the three heart with the yellow one mm. because I and I don't know I was a good moment I I I, I knew one thing here the, the 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 time to to do damage to I mean to damage the you win was when he closed uh, the his wings, wings. So yeah hundred percent otherwise it's important. Otherwise, it's too hard because of Hera uh, evades. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. To be honest, I, uh, I, 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 I prepare a lot for this with this game, and I for the first moment on you know, Monday, I without without testing, I I I reject the adjusting because in a, in adjust in adjusting no, it's adjusting. It's okay, adjusting. Yep. Uh, I um, with because we are uh, we have uh, the same uh, fire uh, power, yeah, fire, and uh, with the tracer and two and three uh, ships who uh, with three uh, tack dice, mm. but you got the the free the free evades on for from Hera, so exactly. I I think. I just I uh, so that is why I try to make you pass around the gas clouds just to you know and give you the the initiative to be for my ships uh, uh, fly like a little aces. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, uh, yeah. Again, thank you very much for the match um, match up. Uh, what did you guys think, the Suresh and uh, Cameron? Um, yeah, that was. Uh surprisingly a still a very exciting game despite there being some dancing around the board um suresh did predict and i'm sure he's he's just grinning ear to ear right now he did predict the first person to turn into the gas clouds would probably lose uh and tom unfortunately you were that first person to turn into the gas clouds uh just um, due to initiative, though, I believe. No? You, well, <laughs> you committed into the gas clouds first. Yeah, fair um, enough. Fair enough yeah. Uh, Apollo, you played, you did, I think, two fakes. So you faked turn-ins twice, I think. Um, was that was the plan to, obviously, you wanted Tom to get into the gas clouds, um, but were you hoping maybe that he would turn in a little bit earlier than he did because your X-Wings were a little bit out of position. You did a great job to bring them back into that center. Um, but did you were you maybe losing patience towards the end there as well? Because it did seem like a battle of patience. Who would get who would get impatient first? Yeah, yeah. I think the the patient was was the key in this game. Um, of course, I got a I I got a clear thing before the game and. I will try to avoid the the the, the justing all the time. Yeah. Um, if I got the luck, if I got the luck, I as I did it and I called the layer uh, time, I got chance to to, uh, to 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 win. No, I mean, 
Uh, but otherwise, if I call wrongly, uh, later time, oof, it was going to yeah. be another another thing, a different yeah. thing, yeah. That was a yeah. risk, um, and you definitely, obviously, you, you called it right, and it gave you a big swing there at the end. Um, that was really well played. Um, I think both of you guys did a fantastic job. Uh, congratulations, uh, Apollo. You brought your team over the line there with the fourth win. Uh, so you guys now have uh, your first, well, technically second win on the board with the bye from the first round, right? Um, but you've done a fantastic job. We had all your guys in the chat. We had a lot of Spanish in the chat, um, people cheering you on. So I think yeah. you've, you've, uh, you're probably famous now. You probably you probably won't be able to leave your home <laughs> without getting swamped. Apollo, you are the man that defeated Australia. You, you did, yeah. Not anyone else. So, 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 sorry, sorry, because you, you I mean, I, I just know you, but you're a, you're a, you're a good person. So politely, so so kind with me, because I got less experience in TTS like than you for sure. Anytime. I start because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tabletop player. Oh, for yeah, me, me TTS too, is yeah. a new world. Hundred oh, uh, percent. So thank you, thank you, Tom, for your patience. Uh, uh, I got some problems uh, at the at the end of the to, to joining the the game because I in my search uh, tab was not working. Thank yeah. you so much for the patience, uh, Tom, and for you helping. Not a problem. Um, at all, I enjoy it. I, 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 I enjoy it a lot. I, I suffer a lot because you put things too complicated for me, <laughs> for sure. No, that's not a problem. And uh, thank you so much for the game. I'm, so, I'm um, sweating. I'm sweating. In, in, in Spain, in, in Spain is is now almost summertime and it's too hot. I'm I'm sweating at home. <laughs> Well, we're oh, I'm glad, freezing. I'm glad it was a challenge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that's fantastic. And look, Apollo, um, I'm I look forward to uh, watching the rest of Spain's games. Um, congratulations again. Thank you. Um, and I can't wait Thank to you. play you next time. Yeah, uh, wishing wishing to see you again, uh, Tom. Thank you so much. No worries. All Thanks, right. Mate. See you later, everyone. Um, thank you to Apollo and Tom for jumping on and letting us stream this game. Uh, we will have more games for you next week. We will uh, we will figure out what those will be. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for following. Um, and please, if you didn't catch this game or any of the other games that we've streamed so far, you'll see that uh, we have posted in the chat our YouTube channel where you can check out any of the replays. We'll be uploading this game and the prior two games from the week that we streamed for you to check out. Uh, thank you very much to the players and to the XTC for organizing this really exciting tournament, honestly. Um, and good luck to all players and teams in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you to Suresh as well for assisting me um, no worries at all. Wonderful stream. Um, it has been a very successful day for us. Uh, for, the, for the stream, not so much for the country. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much to everyone involved. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. Thank you, and good evening.